Welcome to our weekly worship service at Greenwood United Methodist Church in Greenwood, Florida, via YouTube and live audience. Let us pray. Gracious God, this season of Lent calls us to worship you all the days of our lives. We pray that the ways of your heavenly kingdom may be made real in the world that surrounds us. May the bread that we need today be made available for us and for all who are hungry. And may you forgive us just as we can forgive those who have sinned against us. In the time of moral testing, may we listen first, your, your, may we listen first for your voice calling to us. This world and all that is in it always will be yours. Help us to lose ourselves to you and your kingdom. Help us to find who we truly are as we walk in your light. Amen. Today's message is coming from the book of Romans. Chapter 5, verses 12 through 19. Romans chapter 5, verses 12 through 19. And scripture state, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way, death came to all people, because all sinned. To be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin does not charge against anyone's account where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who is a pattern of the world of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to many? Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed the many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of the one man death reigned through that one man, how much more would those who receive God's abundance provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in the life through the one man Jesus Christ. Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act, one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners. And so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. The word of God for the people of God. Today's message is titled, Life through the one man. Life through the one man. Let's get into this message. Our scripture today comes from the Romans chapter 5. And I think that everyone hearing my voice can get at the point of the scriptures as a whole by the way of verse 17. And I repeat, for if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned, in life through that one man, how much more would those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Know this, Paul is setting up a stark contrast. Through one man and his trespass, death reigns over all of us. Through another one man, and his act of righteousness, you and I will reign. What a difference. It is literally the difference between life and death. What comes to us through these two men. So you may be wondering to yourself, the question, who are these two men that Paul is putting side by side to make this contrast? They are the one man, Adam, and the other one man, Jesus Christ. 
Adam was a pattern, as it states in scripture, of the one who was to come. Paul writes in verse 14, the word pattern means that Adam served as a model, a prefigurement in some aspects of the one to come. But the parallel will run from the negative to the positive and going from the one man, Adam, to the one man, Jesus Christ. Adam, you see, and as we know, will fall to temptation, whereas Jesus Christ will not. Paul began this section of Romans 5 by saying again in verse 12, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, here Paul is referring to the fall of Adam. In Genesis chapter 3, if I would tell some and remind others, Genesis chapter 3 tells us how sin entered the world when Adam and Eve chose to eat of the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. At first in Genesis 3, it does not seem to be so much about the man Adam as about the woman Eve. But make no mistake, make no mistake, this is Adam's fall as much as it is Eve's fall. You can't blame one over the other because Adam did not listen to the word God has spoken to him. Adam tuned out God's word and yielded to the temptation. Jesus is quite the opposite. The word of God is utmost in his thinking. And he take temptation head on as he overcome as best stated in Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 through 11. As I paraphrase in temptation 1. When the devil tempted him on the mount, Jesus responded by recording scripture. It is written, he says. And then temptation number two, he answers again to Satan. It is written. Temptation number three, the same thing. Jesus Christ said, for it is written. Jesus takes his stand on the word of God, never departing from it. Indeed, as Jesus remained faithful, even while fasting, he embodies the scriptures, specifically in Matthew 4, 4, when he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. How about us? A rhetorical question. Do we ever let temptation, the whisperings of the devil, the allurements of the world, or the desires of our flesh get the better of us so we tune out the word of God? I guarantee us we do. God in his commandments has told us to set aside time to pray and worship him. God in his commandments has told us not to murder our neighbor, whether in thought, word, or deed. But how often and how bitterly can some of us hold a grudge? We tune out God who tell us to always to forgive. Sin, you see. Sin reigns within us. And as a result, so does death. Therefore, Paul wrote in verse 12, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. And in this way, death comes to all people because all sin, my God, my God, if we did not know, death follows after sin as surely as night follows day. Death is the curse and consequence of Adam's disobedience. Adam sinned and it corrupted. His sin corrupted the entire human race. The judgment for sin fell on the whole human race. Adam sinned. We all sin. And as a result, Adam and Eve were driven out of the garden and barred from the tree of life. Likewise, death consumes us all. And says you and I, you and I, even today in 2023, follow in the footsteps of our father, Adam. Flesh gives birth to flesh. 
This tendency to sin is coming to all sons and daughters of Adam. The fancy term for this is original sin. It is the sinful nature of our origin in Adam. The evidence of this is the fact that we all sin and we all die. We are showing the family trait more telling than red hair or blue eyes or the distinct shape of our nose. The family characteristics we all share alike. Everyone on earth is that we all sin and we all die. Look and understand this. We are not going to get any better if we all descended from Adam. Sin and death is our lot in life. And there's nothing we can do to change this. The only way, though, is to be is to be related. Is to have a cousin, a kinship to someone who can get us out of our own mess. And that someone is Jesus Christ. You see, this is where Jesus come in. The second one man, the head of the voice of new humanity. Again, as stated in verse 17, for it is by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man. How much more will those who receive God's provision of grace, abundant provision of grace, and of the gift of righteousness reign in the life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Here is the one man we need to be related to, and that is Jesus Christ. And we can sum up Jesus' whole life, his whole ministry, his whole saving mission as one act of righteousness, according to scripture. Perfect obedience to the will of his father from start to finish. Again, in verses 18 and 19, consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. Just as through the disobedience of one man, the many were made sinners, and so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made more righteous. Adam, you see, wanted to be like God and so disobeyed and exalted himself. Jesus Christ, the very son of God, came from heaven and did not think his equality with God a thing to be grasped, but instead Jesus Christ humbled himself, made himself nothing, and became obedient unto death, even death. On the cross, Jesus did this doing the will of his father in order to redeem and save mankind from the black hole of sin and death into which we have fallen. The cross of Christ is our tree of life. Jesus willingly dies in our place, thereby redeeming us from the curse of death and his resurrection absolutely proves it. Jesus is the sin of the woman who crushed the serpent's head. Jesus is our divine champion, delivering the whole human race. Jesus heads up a whole new humanity of which we, even in 2023, are a part of it. God's gift of righteousness our right standing before God is given to us freely before Christ's sake. We are justified, pronounced righteous, being found in him. Adam and Eve tried to cover their shame with fig leaves, a device of their own making. It did not work. God clothes us with the robe of Christ's righteousness, purchased with his blood. When he died in our place, the only righteousness that really does cover our guilt. Nothing else does. I don't care what anyone tells you. The only thing that covers our guilt is the blood of Jesus Christ. And now as I prepare to close, 
God's grace, God's grace abound for us, my friends. Much more than the sin of Adam is the gift of righteousness in Christ. Much more than the death we die as descendants of Adam is the life we now live in Jesus Christ. Our God, our God is a much more God. Do we have sins and trespasses that weigh us down? There is much more grace, much more abundant grace. Do we have sickness and death? Much more is the life, the eternal life that is ours now and forever through the one man, through the one man, Jesus Christ. Amen. Perhaps. Perhaps my message touched someone in a special way, in a way so special that if you want to now give your life to Jesus, then repeat this message with me and you will be saved. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you confess your faith. And you will be saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Not overly complicated. And now as I bring this first Sunday of worship, first Sunday in Lent worship service to a close. For the sake of the world, we need the one man. We need the one man to rescue us. We need to be set free from sin and the sickness. We need life through the one man. Amen.